by Malaysian culture and heritage, each pattern here is hand-drawn and uses colors that encapsulate the diversity of Southeast Asia. Nala is a lifestyle brand that is vibrant, soulful, and evergreen. Um, so let's take a little walk down memory lane. Um, tell us about the history of Nala. When did it all start and how did it all begin? Um, it started about nine years ago and it was a friend of mine who um, I've been designing and, and advertising all this time and it was a friend of mine who's like, you need to start your own brand. And she said, she gave me a box of stationery from New York and that launched it. So I started with uh, one box of envelopes. We started with one box of envelopes. What does Nala mean? Nala originally was a word that I made up. So before my daughter was born, I wanted a, actually it was originally Mercedes, then it was Pura, but they thought it sounded too much like petrol. <laughs> and um, then I made up Nala, and it wasn't until she was born that all my friends came to me and they're like, oh, so cute. It's uh, Nala from the Lion King. The wife oh. of Simba is called Nala, but it has nothing to do with that, and it actually means successful in Swahili. Oh. So for your entire collection, these beautiful, soulful, vibrant colors, um, is this very much a part of um, your signature? Yeah, I suppose so. I've, I've tried the black and white, but then everyone's like, where is the color? And uh, and I suppose it's it's what makes people happy. I would one day like to go a little bit darker, but I suppose once again, it's 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 full color. So this, this is inspired by the, this collection in particular is inspired by the Chinese Puranakan uh, wedding robes. Oh, with the embroidery, hence thread over heels. Thread over heels. Yeah. Oh. So um, I understand everything here is actually hand painted um, and exactly. produced basically by you in house, right? Exactly. Um, I'm old school. I graduated from an art school at the Royal Academy of Fine Arts in Belgium, and we didn't have computers or so just started at the time. So I had to do everything by hand. And uh, the Google didn't exist, you know, your phone, your WhatsApp, yeah. Pinterest, all that didn't exist. So everything you see here, literally the dress I'm wearing, this, everything on the wall, the curtains, it's all hand-drawn. So let's talk about the inspiration for your designs. Um, I understand a lot of it's actually inspired by Malaysia. Um, why is that? And why Malaysia? Um, well, I was born in Singapore in 1970. We came here in 1972. And... Um, I always thought that I might have been a, a Chinese princess or you know, an Asian princess in a previous life. I don't know, I've always, I always loved everything Asian, Chinese, Malaysian, Pranakan, maybe because the designs have a certain balance and you can feel that uh, the designs from those days, are, people put a lot of time mm -hmm. and effort and it's, um, you can feel that, you can feel that the designs from those days have a lot of soul over anything that's drawn on the computer or new. Oh. Yeah. Do you think that it's important to um, preserve heritage and culture through design? I think it's very important because um, what they used to design in those days, they didn't have computers, so there's a lot more soul because they had to put a lot more energy in it, and they would take you know, one to two or three months to make one painting, and nowadays with a computer it's just one button and it comes out. So I think it's very important to preserve our heritage. So how do you create your pieces? What's your creative process like? Um, I look with my stomach, so I'm always sharp. I always look around me. You I'm nonstop. I'm, yeah, I'm nonstop on. So when I see something, I go whether it's a grill. I see the beauty in everything, and I see patterns in everything, and it's nonstop. It's very tiring because I have ideas nonstop. But um, basically, anything beautiful inspires me. What do you think about the big debate between appreciating versus appropriation of culture in design? And what's your take on that? Um, it's a very interesting question because, of course, it's something that um, plays um, in my head um, substantially when I look at something. There's a fine line about taking something, copying it, putting it on a bag, and then calling it new. 
So when I do get inspiration for something that I find, whether it's on a dress, a robe, or a piece of jewelry, I, I give it my own um, twist. twist. So I'll look at it, but I'll always change it a little. So it's not one-on-one, -on -one, something that I copy. But of course, I'm, I'm honest about it. It's not, I don't skip the whole pranakan and say, like, it's mine. Yeah. So uh, the roots are there, but you always have to give it your own twist. And I, I think it would be different if I was being inspired by pranakan wedding robe and I was making a wedding robe. Right. So I always adapt it and, and give it a new purpose. So I think that's really important. That's a, that's a brilliant way of looking at it. Um, and I think in your designs, you can really see, you know, it's inspired, but it's something fresh, vibrant, and completely new um, in every piece that I see. Well, thank you so much for your time. I think it's time we now go and explore the rest of this beautiful kampong house. What say you? I do. Nala is a lifestyle brand that specializes in pattern design. Inspired by Asian culture and heritage, these patterns are translated to different mediums such as fabrics, wallpaper, handbags, clothing, accessories, homeware, and even stationery. Everything is illustrated by hand. Nala's designs and colors encapsulate the diversity of Southeast Asia. Alright, so now we're going to go into the Baju room, guys. So, this way. Wow. Okay, so let's talk about this corner right here. Yes. This is just a pop of color. What are some of your favorite pieces here? Um, this is one of my favorite. It's called Basket Bloom. So it's a 50s skirt inspired uh, skirt. Like and yeah, exactly like that one. And it's inspired by a plate that I um, I found in Belgium on the flea market. A plate? Yes, exactly. Wow. So that design, sort of the, the pattern on this actually. Exactly. I pulled it apart and this is what the result is. Beautiful. I love it. All right. And you've got a whole bunch of beautiful pieces here. What's another piece that must be happening? This is another one. Yeah. One of my favorite. It's called Kampong Window, and it's inspired by the, the windows just like here, uh, on top of the Kampong houses. Oh, wow. So it's not the sky. Right. <laughs> yeah, no, I was going to say Kampong Window, you know, I thought, I imagined looking out into the sky, and these were the little sort of cotton clouds, but this is beautiful. And you could pair this with sort of, with, a, with a belt, and it's got pockets, so it's, uh, it's one of our classics. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, let's um, move on to the other beautiful corner right here. So we've got a whole whole array of things to pick. Um, and I've heard about this very famous phrase here. It's called Kopa Kabaya. What is a Kopa Kabaya? Kopa Kabaya is basically the collection that's inspired by the, the Kabaya blouse and its embroidery. So this is one of the first dresses that we did in this pattern. It's another one of our classics. So these flowers are, are chrysanthemums, but they're inspired by the embroidery on the Kopa Kabaya. On the Kabaya. On the Kabaya. Kopa Kabaya. And this is called Kopa Kabaya Down, which, is, uh, which has the leaves. Kopakabaya down, that yeah. is so pretty. And I gotta say, I really love the silhouette of these. They're very flattering. Yeah. Um, and w what is this inspired by, this silhouette? Is this it's also a 50s, 50s design, yeah. I find that women always just look beautiful in 50s, 50s design. Give me a waist. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I think it's um, time to talk about this one. I noticed this immediately. This is somewhat subdued compared to everything else. Why is that? And um, well, I want to bring back the kabaya. So I call these my bomber kabayas and um, so because they're cool. So they have the embroidery, just like the bomber jackets, they have the embroidery on the back. And um, my favorite blouse because it's always elegant and you can wear it on jeans, you can wear it on a skirt, you can wear it on a, on a saddle. It's always, always elegant. Always elegant and evergreen. Check it out. I'm already on the cool train right now. <laughs> I think it's time to try out some of these gorgeous pieces. I agree. Lizette sees beauty and patterns in everything. Constantly on the lookout for inspiration, she seeks out antiques found in flea markets all the way in Brussels and snaps pictures of architecture such as traditional kampong houses. Each design she creates has a story behind it. To balance out the brightly colored pattern skirt and accessories, pair it with a plain embroidered kabaya top for a classic look. Roll up those sleeves on this patterned Cuban collared shirt and tie it up at the ends. 
Accessorize with a patent bag of your choice and heels for a chic look.